Hi guys, Yuri here again. Welcome to YB Plays Music. Today I'm going to react to another one from the Love Bites. And this is Set the World on the Fire. This was one of the other songs that was requested a lot of the times. And the last one that I did was Holy War, which apparently is the second song on the same album as uh, Set the World on Fire. Now I have read the lyrics beforehand. I don't quite understand the whole story behind it but i see there are some references perhaps to the other songs on the album being for example uh, somewhere in the lyrics it says stabbing myself with the thunder and thunder is the first track on that same album uh, then later on we have burning down to the gates of hell uh, they have another song called raise some hell i don't know if that's a reference to some of the songs in that same album uh, but that said guys let's check this one out it's live from the ride for vengeance tour 2021 and this is in tokyo apparently the lyrics are in english so similar to the last one it was also in english but there are no captions um, so i don't know if i will understand everything uh, but if I see something or listen or hear something interesting, I will definitely comment to it. So without any further ado, let's check this out. I'm wondering if again they're going to be in their wedding dresses. I assume they're gonna be, uh, as I would assume they're not changing their outfits every song during their performances. I could be wrong, but that's what I guess. Okay, let's hit play. Here we go. Yeah. Set the world on fire! <laughs> Let me hear that again. Let me hear that again. So she says, Set the world on fire. Set the world on fire! Sounds like some parade marching. Yeah, for the majority, it's a drum that gives this like parade kind of rhythm. It sounds like something you would just march onto uh, with like the military or in the parade or in such something similarly. The beginning has a more sinister vibe than the beginning of Holy War, that's for sure. Oh, she has a different guitar here. They're going out. Well, so far, <laughs> the title really does it justice because uh, <laughs> setting the world on fire, we see all the flames on the on the stage there. It gives some kind of feeling, like the gates of hell, it's, it's a phrase that is used in the lyrics and it really feels like a very dark and evil place, let's say. Uh, the music doesn't really feel uplifting so far but that's what i think it's supposed to sound like let's continue it's very very fast paced i think it's more fast paced than the last one so far Oh, 
also the bass. Quite a night chorus actually, and I noticed that the bass player is doing the backing vocals here, uh, so that's nice. I I read that the bass player uh, quitted the uh, in the band and started her own band. As far as I have read from you guys in the comment section, I don't know. Did they find uh, somebody else in the meantime? I hope so. I believe so. I'm not sure. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. It's quite a nice chorus, so let's return a little bit. And again, the lead singer has a pretty powerful voice. Uh, still, guys, I will have to learn more about, about the names. Uh, it will take me a couple of songs to really get their names correctly. It's very interesting, the lead singer here, it's a very nice chorus and, and you can sing it along. The On Fire is, is very well uh, placed in that, uh, in that time of the, of the song. Uh, but it's very interesting uh, to see the lead singer has a lot of, uses her hands a lot of the times and expression and uh, the upper body is, is active a lot of the times, but she doesn't move that much with her feet. She stands pretty still all of the time, and all, most of movements are made with her hands, her head, mouth and such. Um, the, the only movements that I see her make, like her moving on the stage, is like on that raised platform or just on the stage itself. But she doesn't walk that much. It's like she's, she's standing still a lot of the times, but the most of the movements are coming from the upper body because it's easier to control your voice that way. It's hard to control uh your voice totally when you're walking or running around on the stage a lot and i believe that's why she does that uh and she still has a lot of expression that way uh, and a lot of movements which makes it interesting to look at i think and what a powerful spot here look at from where these spots are going i believe when she's standing on the stage there uh she's probably not seeing a lot of the crowd because of the spot that is uh shining towards her. God damn. She's standing still. But uses her hand a lot of the time. Oh, that's a nice shot. Ooh. Again, a double guitar here. So fast. God damn. Try to count this. Try to play that fast and count when... I mean, you have to be so skilled to, to be... Not only to be able to play that fast, but also to keep counts in the music and to be synchronized with each other. That's the hardest part. It's both being fast to play, but also being in sync with each other. It's so hard to do uh, at that pace. Man. Sorry, I want to hear that again. What is that effect that she puts on that? Was that a bend? What was that? Oh, 
How does she do that? Oh, that's interesting to see. Sorry, guys, to pause uh, during this solo. Uh, but, like, you have uh, hammering on the strings, and a lot of people do that just with their fingers. But she's using a plectrum, like most guitar players do on an electric guitar. Uh, again, we see the plectrum on the head of her guitar. But what I was about to say, though, but hammer-on techniques and pulling-off techniques on the guitar is very commonly used in solos and fast-paced movements. And we see that right here as well. And you can do that both with your left hand and your right hand. But with your right hand, if you're using a plectrum, it's not that easy to do it with your fingers. So what she does, she hammers down with her plectrum. It's a very different technique when you uh, hammer down with your plectrum on the string uh, and pull it off again than when you do it with your finger itself. Let's see that again. That little piece here, we see her hammering and pulling off, uh, but doing it with her plectrum as well. She's hammering down here with her fingers. Now she's using her plectrum, you see that? So now she's using her plectrum. Beforehand she used her middle and ring finger to hammer down and pull off, uh, but right now she's using her plectrum. So interesting to see. Yeah, here she's using her middle and ring finger. And now she's using her plectrum. No, not yet. Here she's using her plectrum. Yeah. Woo! My god! She was sliding her plectrum over the strings to get that weird kind of sliding effect, but so nice. I've never seen that before. <laughs> now you should go. Oh, that's a nice key change. Again, she's using the plectrum. <laughs> so they both use the same technique. Sorry guys to pause during this solo so many times, but it's so interesting to see all these techniques uh, being mastered. Jesus. Guys, sorry, I want to hear the whole solo again. Sorry to pause, and I have paused a lot of the times during the solo, but let's just listen and enjoy the whole solo again. So fast! Very clean bendings. Oh, I love this. Again, the double layer guitar here.
Oh, she's using some wah-wah effect here. Sorry, it's very interesting. Um, it's too bad that we don't see her feet because I think she's using her foot to uh, give this wah-wah effect uh, to her solo here. You hear it in her solo while she's playing. Let's see this again. Here we go. You see her kind of stepping her right foot in front of the other, and I think she's holding it on a on a pedal. Right here, I think you kind of see that her right leg is standing in front of her left. I think she's holding it on the on the pad to use that wah wah effect. Very nice. Ooh. She gave a little swing on the tremolo bar right there. Do you see right here, there's a tremolo bar. Uh, she gave it a swing, uh, but I don't really know if it gave some effect, actually, or was it just in the way? Let's see. A little, yeah, a little effect. It's a fire chorus. Very nice. I want to emphasize on the on the feet of the drummer. Let's see her fancy sneakers there. She has some red uh, sneakers on there with her wedding dress. Probably it's more comfortable to uh, to hit the bass drums like that. Here we see her sneakers. I don't know what brand it is. Are those Reeboks? I don't know. We don't see that, of course, from the front, but. It's probably more comfortable to use sneakers to uh, put on your bass drum than it is with heels. Like, that's interesting because the other ones are uh, standing on heels, she isn't. And that's probably because, first of all, it's more comfortable to hit the bass drums and the pedal on your hi-hat with sneakers than it is with high heels, but also because we don't actually see that um, from the crowd. If you're standing in a place of a crowd, you cannot see the feet of the drummer, usually. So I think that's a decision that they uh, consciously made for that. Also, what I was about to say, uh, the lead singer, at a certain point, you see her actually tapping with her foot right here. You see her tapping with her foot on the beat, on that raised platform, uh, so she actually stays on pace in there and keeps a little bit in that vibe let's say i think that's why she does that let's see that here we go look at her foot you see her tapping you see her foot tapping here here we go yeah you see the crowd going with them At the foot of the drummer. Yeah. Whoo! That was fire. Pun intended. Damn. Man. Guys, sorry if I paused too much during the solos there, but 
there's so many there were so many interesting things uh that you can see right there those are synced together so so well and it seems like they found some kind of recipe and i don't really think it's necessarily uh unique about them but it's something that works in the solo when you have two guitar players the first one starts then the second one takes over and then they join together for the next part optionally in another key which builds it up so nicely so you have first a very epic uh, solo from the from the blonde girl sorry guys i will have to learn the names i really apologize so we first see an, a very epic solo from the blonde girl with a lot of interesting techniques and then we go over towards the other girl with a very clean solo kind of with a different style actually it's not all it's not at all the same vibe and then we change the key and combine both guitars together like there are some backing vocals from each other a very nice recipe like that to have a solo and they're masters of it and a very nice chorus actually like the very fast paced verses and the other parts in the song uh besides the solos and the and the choruses um do it it's it's not really something that i would listen to all of the time uh, but i can really appreciate and respect the technique the synchronization and the and the and the talent that goes into playing those parts because those are i think the hardest parts like to play and, and the chorus it's probably for the guitar players the easiest in the song to play, but it's the easiest to listen to as well, uh, because it's it's you can sing along. It's something that you can recognize and listen to without thinking too much. It's a very nice performance here, guys. I'm very glad I watched this one. Uh, I think the next one that I'm going to listen to from the Love Bites uh, will be the Swan Song, and from what I've read. The opening is from Chopin. I'll see. Uh, I'll see when I do that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my reaction to this one from the Love Bites. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video. Also, don't forget to check out my other reaction to Love Bites that I have done, uh, which is The Holy War. The link to the video will be in the description down below or somewhere above here as well. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>